Got some fun stuff from Gina K that I'm going to show you. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I am creating with a new card kit from Gina K Designs. And even though it's very involved, the card turned out really cute. And sometimes I think we enjoy just spending time working on our card projects. Anyone? Am I wrong? To see that card project, stick around. It's coming up next. I'm so excited to have the new card kit from Gina K Designs, and this is called Breath of Sunshine. So I wanna show you, there is a whole set of dies that cut pretty much everything out in here. Now I have these on a magnet sheet that I just bought from Stampin' Storage. They have these new white ones. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about that. They're pretty slippy, but anyway, those are the dies, but if you get this card kit, right, we've got our beautiful Breath of Sunshine stamps. We've got our, I think this is called cobblestone. Yep, cobblestone stencil. And then we have Harvest Silhouettes. If you get this, Gina is throwing in a free die set. How cute is this? So you get these beautiful little outline leaves and the shadow layers. So I think that is so cool. I... I don't really know where to start right now. There's so much goodness, but I have an idea, so let's dive in. First thing I'm going to do is cut out some of my elements from some Gina K Designs, the heavy base weight white, because then I feel like it's gonna be much easier for me to line up my layered stamps. This one, probably I don't need to because I think I can I can figure that one out. But I think for the pumpkins, well, you know what? I think I'm just going to do the pumpkins. And let me go ahead and cut a few of these out and then we'll start stamping. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to use these as a template too. I think I'm going to do a few leaves. Just trying to decide if I want to do anything else right now. Basket, don't think I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and run this through my die cut machine. All right, and I am using a new die cut machine today, the Empress from Anna Griffin, and I will definitely be giving this a little workout, but now I'll go ahead and cut out a couple more pumpkins in case I want three, um, but I might not do three because I think I'm gonna have a flower and two pumpkins. I'm definitely gonna cut out a few more leaves so that I can have some extras for this piece. So I'll go ahead and do those off camera and then we'll stamp. I'm gonna use this as my template for lining things up. Now that I've got everything cut, whoop, I can basically, right, pop the die, well, that didn't go in right. Pop the die cuts back in like that. And this grip mat that I have underneath will hold this nicely into place while I'm stamping. And let me just grab one leaf and we'll figure that one out as well. Because once I have this one lined up, I can just stamp that a few times. So let's get the stamps and we're gonna have our big stamp here. You know, I could also probably just do this where you drop it into the opening and then you know for sure that it's in there. I don't know if you've ever done that, but I'm gonna show you because you know, I find sometimes it can be helpful, but sometimes, yeah, you, know, you know what, it's gonna be fine. We are gonna tilt that like that. Actually, you know what? I am going to do it the other way. Check it out. I'm going to do this. I'm going to lift you up. I'm going to pick these guys up for now because I feel like maybe, <laughs> there we go. Maybe I do want to do the old uh, drop the stamps in because then I know I'm in. Okay, but they're going to be a little sticky in there. I wonder if they're going to be too sticky. Let's see. Picking you up. Are you in? Yeah. I believe so. I wonder if they'll pull up. Oh yeah, okay, there we go. Prime you up. Just want to wipe off the coating when you first get your brand new stamps. And this one, I feel like I could just do the same, get you lined up in there nicely, right? And if I don't have it lined up really well, I can always just redo it. A little wonky. We'll try it. Eh. You know what? I am gonna do it on this one. Sometimes you gotta feel it. You gotta feel what's happening. I think that'll work. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty straight. Okay, back in here. 
Now, if I wanted to get really fancy, let me show you this. If you ever want to be completely sure, I want to thank Beth, who is one of my moderators, for giving me this idea to put on uh, some tape on a piece of acetate so that I can just test these out, okay? Uh, you go here. Here's the thing that's so great about this. Once you get it lined up perfectly, you could crank out a whole bunch for different cards if you were mass producing your cards, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna worry about the leaf yet. I'm going to take some sweet mango. Let's ink this up. And then we can just see, just see how it looks. See if it's lined up, hold that. Well, that's where I probably could have used a magnet, but I'll just press down and press. That's pretty close. I think it could be better. So that's how you know. Okay, you like that. I think this one's good, right? Let me check my green. <laughs> now, <laughs> you may be thinking, Kathy, couldn't you, couldn't you have just used the dies? I, yes. <laughs> I mean, couldn't you have just stamped first? Yes, but I like to know that, let's see this one. Oh, I think that's lined up perfectly. Yep, okay. Wipe these off. <laughs> I'm always, I'm always thinking. All right. But that's how I'm going to figure out what is the best lineup. And the other thing that's happening when you're doing this, you are inadvertently priming your stamps a little, which is also nice because then they're just going to stamp better and better. So let me try this again and we'll get this, we'll get it lined up. Five minutes later. I think I might have it this time. Well, let's just take this one, it's darker. Bringing you in, holding you down, press, release. There we go, got it. And here's where once you nail it, you should really stamp as many as you can. <laughs> Cause what if you wanna do more, you know? I'm gonna start out with my sweet mango, okay? Get a nice coating. Mm -hmm. like that. Bring this down, transfer, right, going to give it one more stamp, and press. Now what I would like to do, actually let's get that right there. I would like to add a little depth to my pumpkin, and you know what I think? I need a cube. Let me grab my tangerine twist cube. All right, I'm gonna take tangerine twist here and just put a little on the bottom like that. And I'm going to take my orange brush and just sort of soften it right there. I don't wanna have a super hard line. That one actually looks great. Bring it down and stamp. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I like that. Let's uh, let's do that again. And then just sort of tap it up a bit like that. Okay, that's gonna give a cool look. It just kinda gives me that two-toned look. You can even just do it this way where you, you know, get your brush. And just tap it on. You don't have to go directly to the piece. But isn't that fun? It gives that really rich look. I might have gotten a little more ink in there than I wanted, but you know what? I think that's beautiful. All right, so there's that. Now I'm going to do, I guess, layer one of green leaf. Like that. And then I need to put the other part of that leaf on, but I think what needs to happen though is now that I'm perfectly lined up on this one, let's do one more. I'm gonna move that into the next here to do the detail of the leaf. And I'm gonna do that in fresh asparagus. So let me just grab that cube. This is uh, very detailed. Here's how you get it out like that. Okay, then that's gonna go there. 
I think that looks good. And then it sticks, you know, it's gonna stick nicely in there. And then I can take this detail part of the leaf, figure out exactly how that goes on. That I think is a little easier to see. Let's try it. If it doesn't work, I'll redo it. But I'm a little off, it's okay. Prime and fresh asparagus. So you go like that. Ooh, that's cool, right? Gives that detail. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's a little off and I kind of love it, okay? So out you go. <laughs> I just flipped you into the ether. Now we'll just redo this one here, okay? Oh, now I do need my cube for grass green. Sometimes I'm not sure. And that's that's the beautiful thing. There's always a need for different uh, different colors at different times. And that's, uh, well, that's an example right there. Okay, then this guy comes out like that. Up you go, like that. And fresh asparagus. I'm so glad Gina puts her names on the cubes so you can see what you're doing. Boom. Okay, that looks good. <laughs> Digging you out. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Come here. Things are flying. Things are flying. Okay, let me do the next one and then we'll add our stems. So now I have to place my swirly twirly stems. And I We'll have to see. We'll have to test these out on the acetate. I just think it would have been way too hard for me to figure that out. Here's the thing. Sometimes, I don't know if you're looking when you're stamping, are you looking to save time? Or are you looking to say, hey, oh, I just moved that one. I just wanna have fun while I'm crafting. And I love taking the time, you know? I, I do. And so sometimes when I take these little extra steps, I, you know, I think it's really fun to take your time, have some fun, see what it all looks like. All right, let's go here. I think I'm way off on that one. This one is pretty good, but I'll just keep going until I get it perfectly lined up. Press. It could be there. Getting closer. <laughs> Let me get it perfect, and then we'll stamp our color. That, my friends, is nailing the landing, so it <laughs> just takes a few, you know? Just takes a few. Really handy little tool. Okay, now let's go ahead and say grass green, grass green. Okay, bring this down. And I'm just gonna do more of a delicate touch because these have little, little details in there that I think are so pretty but I don't know if I'm gonna to try to do a little, I might, I might, let's see. Okay, like that. Now I could take just the littlest amount here uh, of asparagus, just kind of swipe some on the stem, fresh asparagus that is, right, like that. And then take my green brush and just soften it a bit and bring it in just for a little, you know, that just adds a tiny bit of detail into depth into the base. And in fact, I could add a little more this route. I love doing that. All right. Oh, so good. Okay. I tell you, it's, it's worth it. Okay. Now, while I still have room here, I am going to stamp my sunflower as well. This is gonna be fun. All right, I'll do this one because I thought this one would be very easy to cut. But I'm gonna start out, my first layer is going to be sweet corn. And I feel like today is a cube day. I had pulled a bunch of uh, full pads. I have all of Gina's full pads and I do have all the cubes. I, I've got a full set problem. All right, let's press this down. Give that a nice press. Oh, that's such a good color. Sweet corn is probably my all-time favorite yellow. Uh, across the board, it is, it's just, mm, it's so good. Okay, going like that. Now, there are some details here. So I thought what could be cute was to bring in this center, right? 
And this should be pretty easy to line up, right? Because I'm just going points to points. But I think what I'm gonna do is bring in Prickly Pear to add this detail, all right? It, I've got fall on the brain, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> just as we are here in the month of summer. <laughs> all right, let's bring this down and lay that in. Oh, that's perfect. I love it. I'm not gonna double stamp it because I like that shade. And then we're gonna take the insides. Now you have some choices for the inside. I think I am going to go with the crisscross one because I actually think that's so cute. And again, should not be too hard to line up. We could do it at an angle too, that would be cute. Let's get that in there. And I am going to grab my warm cocoa, right? Put that up, do a little prime, and we'll tap on some warm cocoa. I might be a little off there. Oh, that's okay though, I don't mind. I should have tested it, but you know, here's the thing. It's gonna be fine. I think it's cute. I'm going to get the die to cut this out and then I will have that cut out. I will have my pumpkins. Let me see here. Oh, I guess I can lift all this out now. Cause this, I'll just go ahead and line up the die and cut it out. I think it will be very easy. But now look at my cute little pieces. So we've got my pumpkins. Pop you up like that. Pop you up. Try not to bend. But see, that's the thing. Gina's cardstock, the heavy base weight, is so good for die cuts just because it holds everything in place, and now I have that. So I'm gonna cut this out, then we have one more thing to stamp. Well, actually, two more things. So I do have to stamp both the basket and this, which I'm gonna use to put my sunflower on, and then I'm gonna have to stamp a greeting. So there, <laughs> you know, there's things. There's things that have to be done. Now, I'm gonna start here. See, this is where I do want my full-size pad because, you know, surface area. We're gonna go ahead and use our warm cocoa. Get that inked up nicely. That one too. Like that. Bring that down. Transfer. Got a little splotchy there. Let's see if I can fix that. There we go. So basket bottom, but then I thought maybe what I will do, oh, let me get that in there. That looks great. I'm gonna clean that off. And I'm gonna leave the ink that's on here and I'm going to bring in just a little bit darker of a brown. So I've got my dark chocolate. And for this, right, we're gonna get this at the base I'm gonna grab my brown brush, if I can find it. Where is my brown brush? Oh, there it is, I've hardly used the browns. Tap, 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 tap. Just get it a little softer here and stamp. See how that deepens it up and gives it a really nice little base? Oh, I love that. Okay, a little more, a little more like that. And you can just keep doing that, and that's the beauty, again, of having a stamp positioner, right? Because it just keeps going right into the place where you want it. Now, it's pretty subtle on the brown, but I love it. So let me cut these out, and then, oh, I should stamp my greeting while I'm here, though. Let me pick out my greeting. I want to do so very thankful and I want to emboss this in gold. So I'm going to stamp it while I'm here. Waste not, cardstock, want not. I've got my Gina K powder ready to go. And I can just brush away any that sticks on here. So I'm priming up a little. I've got my clear embossing ink. This is from Simon Says Stamp. Ink that up and press just to transfer. I don't want to press too hard because that is such a delicate little so very at, oops, at the top. But I think this will be good. And if it's not, I'll just stamp it on another part. Okay, like that. Now let me grab my little paper catch for my powder. Like that, oh, I think that's a good impression. 
I might have pressed it a little hard, but we'll find out. You never know until you put that powder on. And we'll see how it looks. Oh, that looks good. Oh, I forgot to powder it. <laughs> Let's see. I forgot to put anti-static powder on, but you know what? It actually, Gina's cardstock is really smooth. It's not toothy in any way. So sometimes that works to your benefit, both for ink blending, but also for anti-static powders. So I'm going to just come in here like this with my little brush and get some of that excess away. Let me get my heat tool warmed up and I'll melt this powder. So now I've got a gold shiny, oh, I missed a, did I miss a little part? You can always tell there's just one little area where I forgot. There we go. It always helps to tip, tip these into the light and then when you see where there's no shine, you know you missed, you missed a spot. All right, I'll get the dies and cut all of this out and then we can work on the background panel for this card. I went ahead and cut a panel for my card from Master Layouts 4 and I love this little scallop. And I'm just gonna put this onto a grip mat to hold this in place and get my stencil. I think this is such a neat pattern. And all I'm going to do here is just create a little grounding area for my design. And I was kind of torn, like I don't know if I wanna have the yellows or browns, but I kind of feel like I want to do sweet corn. I was gonna do gray, but I think I'm gonna do yellow. And let me grab, and you can, I, I, don't, even, I don't even need my full ink pad. You can use cubes for this as well. I'm just going to ink up my brush, start in the center, and just give a light grounding in the background. Now I don't wanna go all the way to the edges. I'm just creating this soft cobblestone pattern, right? And fading out from the center. Cause the basket's gonna be down here at the bottom. And then you'll just see this in the background. And I thought it'd be cute to have it be in the sweet corn. Oh, love it. It's, good. it's very soft, you cannot see much. But as soon as I lift this up, you will see the little grounding underneath, okay? And that way, I think that's gonna be just fine. So we just have this little base underneath. All right, now we can start assembling the card. I'm gonna take an extra layer here on the greeting. I'm just gonna put a little connect glue here in my little squeeze bottle all over the back here just to kind of shore it up a bit, and give it a little more dimension. And then just pop that on and wiggle it into place. I'll probably put some foam squares on this as well, but what I need to figure out now is how to arrange this. And I don't know yet what color cardstock I'm going to use, but I'm going to pop up my basket first, so let me get some foam squares or foam tape. I know this is, this is a long video, but you know, sometimes, sometimes you're going in and you just, you know, you wanna have it be all all what you want. So I'm gonna do that. And this way I'm supported enough where I can get my pumpkins in here because I want my pumpkins to seem like they're coming out of the basket <laughs> if I can't, you know? So we'll have, we'll have our pumpkins here and then I'm going to have my sunflower here, but I'm gonna have my sunflower, I actually wanna have some leaves coming out. So I think what I'll do is I'm gonna glue on, I think I'll do it now, because I have a feeling my greeting's probably gonna go right here at the base of the basket. Isn't that gonna be cute? I mean, you don't really see much of my background, it's just kind of subtle, but, and then my little, well actually I think these have to come on first, because I want to have, I'm gonna have to cut a little of that. I want my sunflower to be on a stem, 
and maybe, maybe I'm gonna need to figure that out before I put the pumpkins in. All right, <laughs> this is arranging. I tell you, it's the final step. Let me get some leaves glued on. All right, I think what I wanna do is I wanna have a little leaf coming out from that part, right? Gonna do another one on the other side just to have a base of green. But what I don't know is which one is going to be like that. Am I going to have the pumpkins be up or am I going to have the, uh, I don't know if I want, my, my pumpkins need to be sort of in the foreground, so they're gonna have to get popped up. And that is when we bring in thin foam squares. So let me grab some. We're gonna put some on the back of our greeting because I want it to be, oh, where is my, see, I, I lost my Gina pick and stick tool and then I just found it. There we go. You wanna have this be popped up a little, not too much. And these thin foam squares are perfect for that because they will give that a little lift. And then I think what's gonna happen, I'm gonna place that first get my pumpkins out of the way. I just wanna make sure my sunflower has plenty of room up here, and I think I need to cut a little more. Giving it a stem cut, okay? <laughs> I'm not gonna glue this on yet because I should do this when it's on the card, but then my pumpkins are gonna get layered in here. Actually, that's gonna go up a little. I may have to give my pumpkins a cut. Let's pop this panel here onto a note card. I am gonna pop this onto a sweet mango note card because that will pick up the sweet mango in my pumpkins. Okay, forgive my head if it gets in the way here. Just wanna make sure we are centered and that cute little scallop like that. And now we can do our placements. So let me, let me grab my ruler, take off the backers. I'm going to put a bit of my liquid glue on here for that float time. Okay. And I'm gonna line it up right here in the center. That looks pretty centered. Yeah, that's good. I'll go like that. And that way I know that I'm lined up. Now is where I have to figure out Okay, yes, that's the placement I want for sunflower. So sunflower is gonna get liquid glue, mostly just on the parts that will make the most contact. Not really worried about the other part up here. And we're gonna place this right in the center with the top of the sunflower right below that stitched line. Like that. That's good, that should hold it in place there and I'm just gonna press that down so the leaves stay. Now, I may cut my pumpkins a little cause I want them to be in a little lower. So don't be shocked. We're gonna say little pumpkin cut so this little friend can come down a little lower, right? And then this one can I, these don't even need foam squares. Oh, that's so cute. Isn't that cute? So he can come up a little and he can come down a little, but I definitely want that one on top. Like that, okay. So again, no foam squares needed, just liquid glue. Just on the parts that need it, okay. And you go and you're a little tilt like that. And again, this little friend is gonna overlap like that. Oh, so fun. It's just a basket of goodness for fall. Oh my goodness. And I love that there's that little curly cue coming out and just press. So that way we've got the, <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> All right, and then I've got my foam squares here and I will Take these off. 
I mean, it's it's a labor of love. Sometimes when you make a card, you got a lot of things going on, right? And I think, oftentimes, I think it is completely worth it. That's, that's my, that's the story I'm going with. Go here, 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 and here. Again, just for that little float time. And I'm going to center it, I think, right here on the basket. Like that. The reason you like that float time, maybe I'll come down just a little. So it's right at the base of the basket. Oh, it's so cute. All right, pressing that down. Nicely lined up on the basket. Well, I've gone this far, so I put I should put just one more shiny thing on here. I'm just going to put five little gold pearls just for that little extra fun on the card like a little dimension. We'll get those guys out of there and we'll pick you up and pop you down. Boop. Boop. One right on the basket. Boop. One here. And here. And that is my finished card project. I think this is such a fun little card, right? You've got your pumpkins and your big sunflower, your basket, your shiny greeting. So very thankful. That would be a lovely card to send to anyone during the fall or honestly, anytime. You can find links to this new card kit from Gina K Designs in the YouTube description box. I will also have all the other things I used linked and I'll have a blog post for you as well. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you. So hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. To see more cards featuring products from Gina K Designs, check out the two thumbnails I have linked below and I will see you in those videos.